Hey guys, Georgie here, and I'm gonna go over with you on some tips on how to become an ICO investor. Just have to mention here that this is not an investment advice. Just wanna make sure that people are aware how this process of investing in ICO works. As, um, as you might be aware, there's a lot of challenges uh, and a lot of scams out there. So the main point of this is to kind of get you through what an ICO is, how to invest and how to make sure that you don't get scammed out there. Um, real quick about myself, I spent uh, the past five years in accelerators such as Barker's Accelerator and Techstars. I've also invested in a few smaller companies myself and I've been doing analysis and research on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies since 2013. Um, I have written in several uh, Bitcoin publications such as uh, Coinbase and CryptoCoins News as well. And of course, I'm also a BAP advisory board member. Uh, so what is an ICO? An ICO is, stands for Initial Coin Offering. It's, it's essentially something like um, Kickstarter, but of course, uh, you get to own a piece of um, a um, token uh, that is on the um, blockchain. Um, there are several invest benefits of investing in an ICO. Um, you could participate in with as little as a dollar. Um, you have access to projects that are um, sort of uh, world-class investment opportunities uh, and you know if you go out and invest one dollar you might be investing together with people like Anderson Horowitz and the power of a can and um, you know people from Union Square Ventures or Sequoia you know alongside investors that uh, maybe several years ago unless you were in that sort of Silicon Valley or New York City uh, investor network you probably uh, you wouldn't have access to deals uh, like that. Now with this ICO uh, market uh, opportunity, uh, essentially for most ICOs, uh, everybody, everybody has sort of a fair chance to invest. Um, you basically have to, of course, be aware that it's a high risk, high reward investment. So don't try to invest um, everything uh, you own in this um, and the uh, key part again is that once you become an investor uh, you directly are part of the community and you could participate in the development of the project um, it's usually a lot of it is open source and um, you know it the sort of the network effect really creates um, opportunities for you to sort of Go and help the company you know if you've invested you probably also will have an interest to help the company grow uh, so these sort of things are very common in this space and it's probably one of the main reasons why um, like a lot of ICOs uh, are so popular and a lot of these projects have done well because of course if you own a decent share of the company uh, you probably are interested in it for it to grow the investment risk in an ICO, um, there are several different things out there that you need to be careful about. Um, I'll show basically a few examples, but uh, the most common one, so this is my full wallet, which is, I'll show you later how to create one. But with my full wallet, the most um, is where a lot of scamming actually happens. Uh, the most common is where, uh, you know, somebody would somehow find a way to get in touch with you knowing that you participate in a certain ICO or generally they can try to message you on Telegram or Slack if you're part of some of the ICO groups and they would send you a link that probably looks something like this, let's say. Uh, it looks just like my for wallet, but it's not really. And the website will look just like it. Uh, but essentially, as soon as you uh, sort of put in your um, private key in there, you essentially are sharing it with them directly. Uh, and that's, I believe there's something like 200 million worth of cryptocurrency stored already on the market um, from similar scams. Uh, another possible um, 
uh, scam would be for people to uh, take over a website um, of, of the ICO and basically, uh, let's say, to CO or get BAP with three Bs. So it looks like it's uh, also the company website, but it's not. And here they would, for example, there's nothing there now, but once the ICO is live, they, here you will be able to find the address where you um, send your Ethereum to. Uh, you know, if, if this was a fake website, uh, let's say this, uh, probably this will not be the right address to send uh, money to. Now, it, you know, it with several of these sort of high profile attacks, the ICOs actually still, I'm not gonna mention any names, but they actually still honored the tokens for the people that sent the funds to the wrong address, but I wouldn't sort of rely on that uh, all the time. It's best to just be safe and make sure always that you are on the right website and you're sending to the right address. Um, now, another main risk, uh, and this is something that's been actually happening for the past two months, is that the bigger exchanges where most of the liquidity is have been very slow in adding ICO tokens. A lot of it is due to uh, change in regulation where a, a lot of, uh, as, as far as I'm aware, Bitrex is asking for the um, ICO companies uh, or projects to basically go through like a massive amount of documentation, KYC process before a token is listed, which uh, is very different from what the case was six months ago where you could invest in an ICO and then you would be on, let's say, Bitrex or Poloniex a few days later or sometimes the same exact day. Um, so that's been a major issue now for ICO. So just be aware, make sure that your token will have, will be actually tradable um, after the ICO. Um, and, and again, there's also been many, several countries who've, not, who've issued sort of warning against uh, ICO investors or some have also banned them, such as China or South Korea. Um, so be aware that, uh, you know, you're not, not really sure what the climate will be in the next few months. So you might be investing in a token now, it's all legit. And three months later, the country that actually issued that token has banned all ICOs. Uh, so you're kind of stuck with those tokens. Uh, so just, you know, have that in mind. Um, so how do you choose an ICO? Um, generally, you look at an ICO the same as looking at an, as a, in a startup. So if you were to invest in a startup, most of the time, the most important thing really is the team. Uh, everybody knows, I believe, that a great uh, idea is worth nothing without the right execution. Um, it's really the same thing here. And of course, there's few things that are different here than the normal startup you've got lately the most common case of of a probably a bad investment would be a no hard cap or very high hard cap and essentially the project gets over but the, the project is overvalued um during the ice during the ico so once it actually hits the market um you you essentially um are looking at overpriced tokens so the price essentially goes down uh, many um, projects also um, sort of don't provide any transparency at all about who's invested and at what discounts. Uh, so you might be buying, showing up during the ICO and buying tokens at a certain price, but majority of the tokens were already sold as 50, 60, 70% off. And essentially um, you sort of, you sort of bought expensive tokens already. So you know, make sure, check on the groups uh, for the um, ICO project, make sure that nobody actually has bought uh, tokens before you. And it's so, uh, it probably is, will be handy to know uh, what percentage. And, you know, I think it is actually still fair if 
if an investor purchased tokens several months before you for, the, for them to get uh, some sort of incentive or a discount, but um, this is just something to have in mind. The probably the key points here to to make sure that uh, you you don't go wrong with an ICO is uh, anonymous teams. Um, you know, even though Satoshi Nakamoto is anonymous, um, he didn't basically um, ask for twenty million dollars before he created the coin. And I think it's very risky for any ICO that doesn't mention who the team is to be basically investing. The uncapped ICO also can create a project that is overvalued uh, to start with. Um, there's also many ICOs out there who are creating a token, but they don't really need that token. They just use the ICO as a medium to fundraise money. The token actually has no utility at all. To be honest, I think there's many ICOs now uh, in, the, in that same boat, mostly due to the fact that it's just, it's, you know, there's been such a hype around ICOs, so much money raised, and people just hear about it and just sort of jump on, on it uh, as soon as they can. There's also, this could be a plus or a minus, you, can find, and this is definitely more common like in the last five, six months, maybe, I, like I wouldn't say it happens anymore, um, but often you would find yourself um, investing in an ICO that is sells out in, in a minute. That means that you will most likely were not able to, um, to get in, uh, you know, that would be, for example, basic rotation token, uh, which I think sold out in about uh, 30 seconds, or um, I believe like noses, even though that was a reverse Dutch auction that lasted only about 10 minutes. So um, the issue there is that the way, uh, you know, and again, this, I'm not sure if ICOs will be run like this in the future, but essentially what happened is you were out there ready to submit, to send your EFER, and just because there's so many other people trying to get in at the same time, your transaction other actually didn't go through, but you still paid for gas um, and everything. And I'll explain what gas is later. So essentially, you might have paid uh, 20, 30 bucks, depending on what gas price you set to get in an ICO, uh, sometimes even more, um, but you actually couldn't get the tokens. So I will go over real quick. Um, you know, you might be aware of some of these steps, but I'll go over them real quick of like how to actually get your hands on two tokens and then, uh, you know, in this case it would be Ethereum and then how you can actually later participate in any ICO really. So essentially you're looking at a, a gateway where you will be able to uh, use your bank accounts or credit cards and purchase tokens. Uh, the most common one, and in my opinion, the safest and most established brand is Coinbase. So you essentially create an account, you connect to your bank account, and you purchase e first straight away. Um, Coinbase is currently valued at something like one billion dollars. It's got in, it's got, it has backing by Union Square Ventures and uh, Anderson Horowitz, and I believe they're present in about 40 countries worldwide. So once you buy your EFER, it's very important that you actually never send money for an ICO from Coinbase. You need your own wallet. So the most popular option for a wallet is something called My EFER Wallet. Uh, with My EFER Wallet, you can essentially um, you know, come in, uh, put in a random password, uh, create a wallet, and you will be given uh, an address, you'll be given a, um, a key, uh, and you will be given basically uh, sort of, you know, your own, your own wallet where you, you use later to partic participate in an ICO. Now, you got to make sure that you save that in a secure place. If somebody has access to your private key, uh, you are basically screwed. They have access to your money. Uh, you know, and the issue here is that 
this is why decentralization is um, great, but it also has its weaknesses. It, if you mess up your funds in a bank, you can just call the customer service number and maybe you find a solution. Here, there's not much you could do. Uh, you don't necessarily, you can't really, if somebody took your money, you can't really rely on an open source software company to restore it for you. Um, so you're fully in charge of your funds. Once you create an account, you would go and send Ether. Uh, and you can see here, there's an account address. Now what you need to do is you need to go to Coinbase and with the money, that you, with the token that you've purchased from here, you actually need to send them to my Ether wallet. This is the Ethereum address for, for this wallet. Essentially from here, you'll be able to, um, you, your balance will show up here straight away once, once the coins arrive. And then on the token uh, website, you'll find the address where you need to send the tokens to. Uh, it's not visible yet, but it will be visible once the token sale is live. Um, so you basically put in the address. So I'll just put this one, for example, now. Then you say one ether. Um, the gas limit is something that is required basically based on what the ICO's recommendation is. You would find that recommendation on their web page as well. And then you hit generate transaction. And then you click on send transaction and that's about it. You have participated in ICO. Now what happens is once, once the tokens are released, they will actually arrive here back to your wallet. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And once they're back to your wallet, then you'll be able to go to exchanges like Ether Delta or Bitrex or Peronix and actually trade those tokens if you want to, or you can just hold them as long as you want. So what exactly is BAP? I'll pull up the website. Um in case you haven't seen it yet. But BAP is a bank account um, based blockchain. It uh, comes with a product com called the Black Cards, which allows you to open up a UK based bank account from anywhere in the world and you can spend um, cryptocurrency or fiat with it, which is uh, a um, extremely handy product and the interesting part here is that you can vouch for anybody else to use uh, the bank account and that is part of the uh, KYC process uh, but most importantly uh, it the uh, back token which will be the native currency of BAP will be um, essentially something like a central bank for digital currency and this is the grand idea and it would enable uh, central banks to use uh, to issue their own uh, digital currency, uh, central banks anywhere in the world, really. Uh, now back to the more details about the BAX token. The token utility uh, it has sold basically. There's three main points here. Um, it can serve. It can uh, can be used. BAX can be used for operational li licensing and service fees. You can also provide liquidity for fiat currency pay, uh, pairs and can be used as a universal currency for fundraising. Now you might ask, you know, generally the universal currency for fundraising is Ethereum and that is the case for probably 90-95% of all ICOs. But what's different with BAX is that every BAX token actually has KYC integrated uh, within. So any BAX user will actually be KYC. So that actually skips a extra step that you would have to do otherwise if you are uh, accepting Ethereum only. So we believe BAX can actually become one of the tokens that would be used for um, ICOs just based on that uh, utility. Uh, and there'll be 1 billion tokens issued for BAX, 50 million uh, hard cap, 60% um, of that will be uh, offered for the, the public and all unsold tokens will be burned. Um, so if there's any questions, probably the best place to reach me or, or anybody from the team is on Telegram. Um, you know, we're also quite responsive on Twitter uh, as well. Uh, but stay tuned for the website, the token sale will be announced 
probably later this month, the exact date, but we're looking at December or January. Thanks a lot and hope this was um, helpful for you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.